We're live, okay. finally. All right. YouTube. So, yeah, Seriously. we just had it crash on us, like, how many times? Three or four times as we were trying to... YouTube's like, got to get a little better with that. I love, so, oh, I love so we YouTube had to switch. for a lot of things, but here, let me help you so out. So we had to switch to mobile, and so we're now trying to <laughs> <laughs> put it on a... Um, there you go. A little holder thing. Okay. And so we're actually going to go live on yeah. Facebook as well. And I can hear you in there. That's because I have it open. <laughs> now I'll close it. We're really good at this. All right. So you got Instagram on there. Yeah. Let me see that one. We'll set it up. So anyway, uh, we are doing a Q&A session here today. Um, I can't see the comments on that one. My tech support here joined me because there are none yet. I'm really good at this. Yeah, there are none yet. We're, we're good. There's okay. no comments. Just making sure. No one's yeah. asking anything. But we have had a number of questions come in before. You gotta remember to look over here instead of over where I my face I gotta look right is. here because I was trying to go live in multiple places at once. So basically, yeah, we, it's Q&A. I get a lot of questions, so I just kind of want, wanted to do another <laughs> Q&A uh, to really address a lot of the things that keep popping up and that I just want to make everyone's life easier because, you know, it, it really sucks to, to have a question and have no one answer it. So um, I, I will try to get to all the comments, especially some of the ones that came in over where I was away for about 10, 10 days. And Rob's gonna, um, Rob's gonna, like, you're talking, right? And I'm just, just so y'all know, I'm going to be like answering, I mean, not answering, but looking at questions. So if he misses it, I'm going to get it. I got my paper handy. I'm writing it down. So anyway, uh, thank you. And uh, so just some of the ones that have come in before, like I had one that literally just came in a few minutes ago from one of my friends, the Franklins. And uh, basically, um, I, they just want to know how to acquire something. So uh, the, the idea is that, you know, I, I don't typically sell direct with art, so anything you see uh, that might come in or might, uh, might catch your eye from what I'm working on, just go through my gallery list and find a gallery. If you have one you've worked with before, that's great. Uh, please contact them. Uh, otherwise, um, I probably will try to figure out if you message me and I do answer, which I try to do every time. Um, just know that uh, contact, I will put, try to put you in touch with the gallery either you saw the piece at or if it's with me, I'll try to geographically figure it out. So just bear with me that, that I try to respect my galleries in that way and uh, selling direct isn't something I do. Uh, that being said, I do sell things like Tervis. Uh, uh, oh. I, I have my own Nestor series that is basically sculpture, metal sculpture. Yeah. Wait, I'm better right. I don't know which camera to look at. <laughs> yeah. It's a little narcissistic going on right here. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, hopefully everyone will uh, bear with us while we try to manage. Basically, it's you, YouTube, that I'm pointing at. Um, you're the one giving us so much trouble because in the end, it was supposed to be like the way to manage all of social media videos because you can port it to other things, but it keeps crashing. So, uh, that being said, um, my show schedule coming up, just real quick, some people have asked about that. Um, I'm from France. Oh, hey, France, wow, that's cool. <laughs> uh, bonjour. Um, the, uh, the uh, I might have one in a couple of weeks. We're still working that out. I don't exactly know, but Texas, keep an eye out. That might happen. Um, next, for confirmed, uh, July, 6th and 7th? Mm -hmm. the, the weekend of July the 4th, whatever July, that falls on. I believe it's 6th and 7th. Uh, I will be in South Lake Tahoe, mm -hmm. so California, Nevada people, come say hi. Uh, Sacramento friends, come on, come over. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the month after that, uh, I got confirmation I will be in Castro Valley, California. So again, Northern California people, if this is more of the east of the Bay Area, I think. I've never been there before, so I have been to San Francisco. That's at, is that? Castro Valley, that's Worldwide, Worldwide Art. Art. Yep, this mm -hmm. will be the first time I've worked with them, so I'm looking forward to that. Tim Matusek will be there, and Chris Walczak will be there, so if you're fans of them, please come out too. Um, and uh, uh, what else? Um, hey, Robin. Uh, oh, Robin. Um, the, uh, uh, working on a lot of different things. I, I never try to say things that I haven't really gotten 
pen, uh, uh, you know, ink sign on the dotted line because a lot of things just kind of go into nothing. But oh, Comic Con, I will be in San Diego for Comic Con. In July. July. Uh, mm -hmm. So my summer is looking really, really well traveled. Uh, hopefully, I'm not <laughs> ping ponging from here because I live in Orlando. So between here and California, I, I tend to. Um, and uh, you know, as much as I like the frequent flyer miles, it's it can get a little interesting, especially with the time change, three hours, and if Florida stays on Atlantic time, it might be four hours uh, coming up here. Um, but we'll worry about that. We get to it. So uh, that's the show schedule. Um, All right, so I got a couple of questions for you. Okay. Take it away. So for anybody who's new, the one of the most frequently asked questions is, what are your paints, what are your canvases, what are your brushes? Oh, okay, simple enough. I, I tend to take brushes a little bit differently than most artists, I think, at least the ones I, you know, when you're on YouTube and you see all this stuff. Uh, I use cheap brushes. They're, I think they're called Simply Simmons. I get them from Dick Blick. They are very inexpensive. And that's because when I travel, typically I'll paint something. And since I'm an oil painter, if I put it down the next day, it will be kind of mushy and gooky. And it, it just, it would take an hour to clean it properly. And by then I've probably done more to destroy it than clean it. So uh, they're only a couple hours a piece and I treat them really badly. <laughs> But at the same time, I can uh, give them away if somebody wants them. But uh, Hi, uh, Catherine. in the end, uh, I think uh, that's probably the only thing I really save some money on. And it's because of what I do with them rather than uh, how they perform. Uh, but just flat washes, you know, nothing fancy. Uh, maybe a liner brush. I've tried, some people who follow me know I've tried swords and things of that nature. And, and while they're, they're nice and fun, they're just kind of the flavor, I try them out, and if they stick, they do, and swords didn't stick around. Um, you know, I don't use fan brushes, I don't, I don't use anything but really washes uh, square, uh, square it off. And uh, with that being said, uh, paints, I try to use some of the best. And in my opinion, I love oil paints, I do use acrylics sometimes, and acrylics I use Golden, um, but Golden has a company, a side company called Williamsburg, and I use their oil paints. And I had found them before Golden owned them, but now that they are have been bought out, they are kind of available everywhere at a very good rate. So those of you who like Old Holland or maybe Holbein, um, you could look at Williamsburg and maybe find something equivalent. And they, they offer a really good synthetic line. So, uh, oh, thank you, Ken. Um, Basically, uh, you can get a really high-end result buying uh, domestically. So for those of the United States, they are from the United States. Uh, so you can get them a little bit cheaper than say Holbein, which I think is from Japan, and Old Holland, which I think is from Denmark. Uh, forgive me if that's off. Um, so for that, the, the paint quality is really nice. And they come in synthetics, which for a guy who tries to avoid carcinogens is a good thing. Uh, oh, hi. Hi, Justin. Thank you. <laughs> uh, cool. I hope you enjoy your vacation, Justin. Um, so that that's the... Uh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, oh, um, that's the, uh, the, the, the nitty-gritty on paints. Um, I tend... Oh, thinner. Hi, I Elizabeth. I tend to use a lot of um, uh, things that are not as... Uh, caustic or carcinogenic, if I can make up words, maybe are real. Um, but th basically <laughs> that stuff that, 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 that won't hurt you 50 years from now if you're painting. And if, if you've watched my live videos, sometimes we'll, we'll turn off the fans because I usually have air filters and stuff going. So um, with that being said, uh, paint thinner, I use Lovac uh, Gamsol. It's a lot more expensive but I use it because it's uh, pretty much odorless, um, but I only use it sparingly. Um, I use thinner thinly. Uh, the, uh, the other thing that is probably the only vice of mine that I'm trying to get away from, uh, not for technical reasons, but for health reasons, is, is uh, liquid. And it's basically a flow medium that is a petroleum distillate that helps uh, level brush 
uh, uh, level level uh, brush strokes and um, increased speed for drying. And as an oil painter in uh, a gallery world right now, you have to go faster, faster, faster. And so for me, it's very important to do that. And um, hey, Bobby. Oh, hey. <laughs> um, the uh, the the last thing is uh, um, basically the 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 palette that would be that your paints go on. I use tearaways, so I know it's it's not as elegant as say a glass sheet and scraping it and and all that's well and good. And I don't mean to be critical or make fun, but it is a lot of time to when you're a guy. If you've seen my palette, it's like a Jackson Pollock painting with the flu it's just bad well and plus on your as you're constantly you know you'll you'll work on a piece until it's um, yeah. sort of too wet for you to work on then you'll switch off put right. that one on the the dryer and then start another well, I say the dryer but on the <laughs> wall yeah. and then start a new one so maybe it's a completely different palette and then you'd have yeah. to have you know clean that one and then rebuild well, that palette again. Yeah. so yeah I mean granted I probably take it to the extreme um, but it works for me. It's kind of like if you've ever, if you're a person who likes, likes uh, uh, like a minimalist. So if you need the laundry in the laundry bin, that's not my palette. It's very much a bachelor in college floor, you know, just so true. Uh, that that is my palette. When he goes away but, for shows, I go in there and clean his studio. But the thing is, if you're used to living like that, you know where things are because they are where you left them. And with my paints, it's no different. So uh, if something gets cleaned, it's like. That is true because he comes in going, okay, where did where, you put, where'd you put it? it? This, where did you put that? But yeah, it drives uh, me nuts. But so it's, yes. again, with, with art, it's not what you have to buy. It's what works for you. Uh, you know, I, I, for my traveling palette holder, I use a, a, a binder for, for journals. Uh, I found it on sale at some off a supply thing mm -hmm. and it works for me because it's just what I'm done oh, I'll take yeah, it away it's actually ideal I, th I think a lot of people have commented yeah. on it but you know when they've seen it uh, oh and the mall stick uh, I shake a lot at least I used <laughs> yes, to Chris. Um, the, uh, the the mall stick is basically it's a, a stick that you use kind of like in, if you've ever played pool billiards whatever um, you bridge and with one and you use the other well this one you bridge off of an edge of the painting, so you, you kind of like like that, and you hold the brush. Uh, I don't have it's in the other packed away. I uh, haven't unpacked since New Jersey, um, but uh, the, the the stick itself goes back since. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci used a mall stick, so M A H L. If you're googling it, um, but uh, really the rest of it is just. You know whatever you want you don't have to go buy okay, from michael's you don't have to you can buy online i mean it might be nice to go to michael's you could see i hate to pick on them like joann's and all those places uh i i i used to go to art stores and buy things constantly and it was just uh it's a little more expensive to hold it in your hand than it is to uh order it online um what other questions? I know um, there's a whole bunch you did, of them in. Yeah, you just had one come in there um, that said, uh, how much do you plan your compositions or do you wing it? They always look balanced and critical. Oh, wow. Oh, Thank before you. Before you answer that, just for anyone who's just tuned in, if you're wondering why we're like all over the place. We're with feeling <laughs> narcissistic today. <laughs> no, we went live on, on YouTube, but because YouTube crashed on us the last time we went live on it, sorry, YouTube, we're still trying to get you all worked out. Um, we also went live on Instagram here and on Facebook here. So YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, Facebook. So um, that's why we're kind of all over the place with our things. That way if we go crash, we're covered. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> we'll just say, hey, hop over to Instagram or whatever. You do so. what you can do. Sorry, I missed you in New Jersey. Okay, yeah, so anyway, so the question was, how much do you play in your compositions or do you wing it? And I think the one you did today was sort of winged. Was I it, or did you literally it? just had it in my mind. It, I, I guess you consider the one, if, if, you're, if you haven't seen it, go on to, I guess, Instagram stories. Uh, and you'll see me. I, I literally just said, Doris, I'm about to start a painting. I just had some, an idea pop in my head. And uh, it was 
it was kind of a segue from, or a, a, a sequel from a painting I had done called Feeling Blue, which I tried to very much, very promote heavily because same, same set of circumstances, I had an idea in my head and I just said, you know, maybe this might turn into something. So uh, I, I have kind of evolved over the years to go from sketching pretty uh, specifically, you know, not like a full on picture. Like if you've seen my, my art of book, there were some in there and they were done fully because I had time on my hands. And I was, I was literally killing time while doing them. Um, and uh, now, and, and that sort of migrated into, I had painted a background and I drew a character very specifically for that painting. And now I don't hardly sketch at all. And it's just, I, I wanna say, this is something that I learned way back in animation. It wasn't like a lesson, but rather it was just a habit that everyone did is, you know, everything is about making the movie. So when you're, you're you're making a film, uh, typically, or, or a video game even, uh, in video games we did the same thing, uh, we would basically build all these assets, uh, draw all these concept pieces and all this stuff, production, be to get to the final frame, or the final game, uh, you know, whatever uh, 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 what version we were working on that day, a build is what they call it. Um, and working towards that final build, you basically just make all the stuff and it takes up gigs and gigs and terabytes of data uh, that at the end we just kind of threw away. You know, it, it, it was a byproduct of the final. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you're, you're baking a cake, you don't keep all the broken eggshells or anything like that. It's not part of the culinary experience at the end. So same thing with, uh, with fine art, I've kind of migrated away from, from sketching as part of that process, but I've, I've learned that that's not a good thing in, in always. Uh, I think the, 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 the fact that I do it every day um, means that I have a, a decent habits for composition, but uh, I've tried very hard within the past couple months actually, I've really tried hard to start sketching on painting with paint. Uh, I, I used to do that in, in, with doing like furthest to nearest. So I, like if, I, if, if you look at the one I was working on today, normally I'd start with the whole background and then put in the water and then move forward and then the rocks and then move forward and then maybe the duck and the frog and then move forward and then the fish where with this one, you can see I've started to be much more gestural, uh, much more um, um, deliberate with, with how I go about it so that there's less wasted time. And I think as an artist, uh, this is something I remember very, very early on in my animation career when I asked someone what they, they were hiring for a, a film and I asked them what they were looking for and they said, speed, we want speed. And if you can go faster, but not necessarily be the best artist, then that's what we need. We need to get to the final result fastest. And, and I, I was taken aback by that, because you'd think in an animated film that they would want the best. But really what it comes down to is you're given a deadline, you're given a budget. And time and speed, the, the variable there is quality. And, and um, the you know in the end and the faster you could go so, um have such little time on screen sometimes that you yeah. you wouldn't notice if it why is this going dark on us yeah I, I mean i'm sure it'll still keep going um but uh in the end i think uh, uh what you're left with is if you can surround yourself with some of the best talent they don't need a whole lot of time and i think it's just through repetition you know you do something every day you get good at it you know, uh, driving while drinking coffee and texting. You know, you do it every day. You're pretty, pretty good at it. Um, but uh, in the end, I, I think uh, I'm trying to train myself to get to the best idea quickly rather than go through iterations. And, and, I, and I feel like I've progressed a lot, but I, I would be lying if I sat here and said, yeah, I don't need to do it ever again because I'd be a, a D word. Um, 
but the, 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 the best thing I could say is that I have a lot to learn and I hope I never stop learning because that means that uh, I'll progress and if nothing else, uh, people who look at my work can see a progression. It may not always be for the best, but uh, hopefully they won't, they won't agree with me on that. Uh, yeah, Bobby, I don't know if you saw the latest, um, you were commenting that it was kind of cool that he was sketching with paint. If you've seen the latest um, video that we put up on YouTube, and I think we put a link on Facebook too, it actually has you sketching from a blank canvas. You started that painting. Yeah. Um, and really I would do that sketching it out. after the fact, where like, like clay, which I saw someone ask about if I did any other mediums, I, I do, and uh, clay was one of them where I had done a lot of sculpture, but uh, I had a, a very fascinating conversation with a sculpturist who we, we found a common level when we were talking about the additive process of creation, and oil painting and sculpture have that in common in my opinion. Where, yeah, you can claw back some and certainly do, but for me, when I paint, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process where you, you go and you, you put down something and then you move it around and then you might add some more or wipe it off if you mess up. Okay. Um, I but, knew that was uh, going to happen. No, we're, we're having a, an issue here with Instagram. Instagram. Put so. your face on there. Unlock that phone. <laughs> it's not going to work now that you got it. So, okay, yeah, it's back. It, it'll come back in a second. Maybe just hit the settings. I don't on know real why quick. your screen keeps going black because anyway, it'll come back. Give it just a so second. So the, the the idea is that that uh, by sketching, I'm sort of taking that back into the realm of painting or or illustration, uh, like you would sketch something, but. Um, a little bit more uh, bare bones. It's just kind of to get the idea and not not build up a layer of paint that I don't intend to use. And in the past, I think that was something I did. Uh, definitely um, had issues where I would paint huge ornate backgrounds and then add things on top. So uh, just to, to, to answer the, the, the question fully about other mediums, uh, if, you know, if you look on my website, RavKazArt.com, uh, I have a shop where I sell sculptures. So you can see what I can do with, uh, clay, uh, with, with, with sculpting and, and uh, the, the new processes of, uh, of, of printing and all that fun stuff. So you, okay. can, you can see some of that. And then uh, obviously acrylic painting and uh, I don't know, making a mess, is that an art? I do that very well. All right, so people on Instagram, <laughs> I see people joining, but I can't, we, yeah, don't, we don't have a screen. So if you guys can see us, just comment. And let us yeah, know. please let us so know. So one of the questions that came from Instagram, because we're all, for anybody that's just joining, we're, <laughs> we're doing live on three places. But um, so on Instagram, one of the questions was from Jesse, um, do you use any other mediums besides oil? Oh, besides, yeah. So yeah, that was uh, acrylic, um, uh, uh, sculpting, Jessica digital says sculpting. Paused. Oh, it's paused. Huh? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna restart Instagram. Keep answering. So yeah, um, the uh, uh, really art for me is is just kind of a big sandbox where you can play in so many different uh, mediums and um, well, animation. I mean, the video games. Um, I, I mean, art art to me is is just so much fun. So. When somebody says, like, well, what do you think? I'm more quickly to go to, to doing this than I am to speaking with words scotch. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> do you need a drink? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the, uh, so anyway. So, welcome back, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, so, Jesse, if you were on there, or maybe that was Jessica who jumped over to Facebook, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, the answer, the question was if you used any other mediums. All right. You're done with that. All right, so we had from um, uh, Vincent on Facebook asked, how do you determine the price of your pieces? This is a very good question that I probably won't give you a good answer for. Um, I personally don't do it. Yeah. Uh, I try to stay out of the financials as much as possible because in the early part, I used to represent myself completely. And uh, 
maybe giving this backstory will help you understand why I do it the way I do it. Um, I used to do farmer's markets and art festivals and all sorts of things of that nature. And it was very hard to set a price because, you know, it's subjective. You know, how good is this piece versus that piece? Uh, you know, if I thought a piece turned out well, uh, I, I might charge more and that kind of stuff. And it, it never felt like I was very confident at it. So um, when I finally got into the realm of working with companies to, to publish and to uh, represent my work in galleries, hey, I let them do it. <laughs> so um, I know we go by size. Uh, at least that's what I've been told we do. Uh, I mean, yeah, when it comes no. to a gallery, the, if the gallery owns the painting, obviously I have no control over what they what they do. Uh, and some recently, but I think most ga most galleries follow that. Yeah, most galleries of, stay in the MSRP. The, and, uh, but the, but I mean, but pricing by size, yeah, you know, versus yeah. like what they just oh this one. I mean, you, obviously there's going like to be something. More, so it's more you know, if I if I do a piece that's uh, celebrated uh, for ra something random, obviously there might be a, a premium on that. But, uh, you know, like if there's an AP and I do remarks, that will be worth more. But, uh, you know, we're talking about technical things and that's the way I like to keep it, is yeah. keeping it technical rather think, than subjective. But the, the base always yeah. starts with the size. But that being said, same, sort of the same answer as, as the, where do I go for commissions is the galleries will have that information, you know, and. I am somewhat new, maybe not now, but I'm, I'm still, I look at some of my contemporaries and they've been in the, this business way longer than me and I'm looking up at them like, oh, I wanna be you someday still. So uh, I know that I'm still in that entry level uh, feeling anyway, with my price point. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, with demand come the prices. So. Uh, I, I joked when I first started painting that the price was basically what I wanted for it divided by 10, and that's what I got. Uh, and not much has changed. No. Um, hey. <laughs> but, but in the end, it's not uh, you, you know, I, so I, I, I mean, with that being said, out. really the way I feel about it is that I'm, I'm just lucky to be able to do this for a living. So uh, if I can, you know, pay my bills and, and be happy doing what I love to do, then all the better for it. All right. So another question that was from Facebook, um, <laughs> David Longwater said, who's your favorite art consultant? Oh, David. <laughs> um, no. So Bobby said, what's going on with Kickstarter? And I can probably oh, yeah. answer that yeah. one if you want. Um, just because that's kind of my world is the Kickstarter stuff. It's um, over. I can tell you that. Well, the Kickstarter's over, but the, the, the books haven't been mailed, so don't right. make people think they've no, missed no, no. it. No, 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 not in that way. Um, the, um, the books were mailed last, or the, sorry, the books landed in New York last week, mm -hmm. last weekend. Um, and if history repeats itself based on um, the first printing, then we should see them here in Florida um, probably this next week. Because it, it took about two weeks wow. from them for them to go. A week and a half to two weeks was the travel time from New York to Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of that is just them getting through customs because they are coming from the United Kingdom. Um, so they came through customs. And then they're going to be put on a truck, of course, and hauled down to Florida. And then once they get here, they'll be handed off to a delivery company who will contact us and schedule a time. So as soon as we hear from them... Mm -hmm. Then we'll schedule, um, you know, we'll send out messages saying, um, you know, this is when we're expecting them to arrive. And, you know, if you want to join us on the live video when they get delivered, because if you were with us last mm. time they got delivered, that was kind of fun. It was um, fun. Really. You we, and I remember that differently. We came so close to seeing all 500 of those books. And we're expecting a thousand this time. All 500 of those books um, were so close to crashing onto the asphalt where, um, I think, I really think that the pallet was too large for the truck. So I'm hoping this time, considering it's double the order, that they will send them on a little bit bigger truck. <laughs> so anyway, that was fun. But that's where that is. So, it, and then as soon as they arrive here, just like last time, we're gonna start, any of them that had sketches that, um, uh, anybody that had um, backed at the level that had a sketch from Rob in the book, He's going to do those right away while he's doing those. I'm going to start shipping out the ones that didn't have sketches in them 
So it'll be just a, a really quick turnaround. I mean, we turned around 500 in a matter of weeks. Um, yeah, it was about a total of two weeks, I think, for turning them all around. And then that was with you starting um, over at the um, internet, the Epcot International Festival yeah. of the Arts at the same time. So I was he doing was Epcot. On, so then, he was only able to finish those sketches around Epcot hours. So yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. But and we I got was it. doing sketches at Epcot too, technically speaking. Oh. oh, and cartoon villain fan said, "I'm so excited! I just got your cup in the mail today. All I have Yay. to say is awesome work." Yay! But well, we're doing more. So Yay! Shameless plug. And I'm like, yeah, I was gonna say I'm a huge yeah. Tervis fan myself, so yeah. I got mine that I just carry around the house with me all day long. Yeah, it is kind of something I never really thought I would be as an authorized dealer of Tervis. Well, that, you're not an authorized dealer. Well, I mean, dealer. we don't have a store we literally that we. Them. Yeah, but I mean, we're not selling other people's oh, they, well, yeah, I'm not a dealer. We're only selling Tervis. I, I just, that, yeah, we're not making orders for Tervis with other designs, just yours. Yeah. But yes, it is official, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, another question here was, um, where did it go? Oh, right here. Heath says, as a novice, what's the best way to blend colors? Hmm. That's kind of like what's the meaning of life in a lot of ways uh, as a type of question. But to be... As with an oil paint, you mix on the canvas. That's probably the best advice I could give is don't think about it. Where most people come from acrylic where you mix on your palette and you kind of gradient out the, the blending and then apply it where you need it. Um, basically, I would say mix on the canvas and, and then try to just try to move them together yeah, <laughs> through brushes. Uh, so, um, with that being said, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's about as simplistic as you're gonna get on social media. Your dad commented here. He's oh, on Instagram. He? he says, "Use your fingers." Fingers, yes. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think I, I have a, a little bit on the knuckles here, but you should have caught me earlier before a little run. He oftentimes yeah. comes into the yeah. living room or kitchen or wherever he's got it you know, streaked on his face, on his ear, where he's just done, you know, whatever. And that's whatever because sometimes using fingers is easier to, to blend things. And it, it's, uh, you're guaranteed not to apply more paint of, because sometimes uh, paint hides in your brush. So you, it could be as clean as you could ever expect. You look at it, oh yeah, nothing. And you put it on and there's blue everywhere or whatever. <laughs> so sometimes it's easier just to just what? And anybody that's been with us for a while, then you know, um, one of my biggest complaints was always when we, we, we moved, what, like a year and a half ago. So we have dark cabinets now, but before then we had white, like, you know, Florida white cabinets mm -hmm. and there was always blue fingerprints on my white they wiped cabinets off, though. in the kitchen. <laughs> they wiped off. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, Bobby said. Thank you for the Kickstarter info. Excited to get my book with a sketch, sliding cover, hey. goodies. Yeah. yeah, the cover's really nice. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, it's the uh, slipcase is what it's. Sorry, yeah, slipcase. Slip yeah. Right. Yeah, no, that was something I really wanted to do on the first printing of the book, but um, they're really very expensive. <laughs> so we had, to, we had to plan the budget properly in order to be able to do the slipcases with the second printing. Yeah. Karen got my Tervis cup today, too. Yay, all right. And you can see these so fast. It's like... Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so Chris had actually commented in um, the YouTube comments, and I saw it just before we went live. Um, how did the... I think the question... I tried to jot it down really quickly because it was just the moment we are going live, but I believe he said... He asked a question about how the pups reacted after we got back from Alaska. Oh, my God. They freaked out. <laughs> I mean, as you would expect, but, you know... They did. I mean, a little more than usual. Kira has a tendency when she gets really excited about something, she does this cry like she's a, you know, like she's a two-year-old yeah. child excited. <laughs> she was just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> but Bo just looked up at me from over there when I did that. Yeah. Like, Is everybody okay over there? <laughs> yeah, no, no, they are, they were super excited. We were super excited to see them too because you know we. It's been not what seen was it, ten or eleven days? I forget. Well, the cruise was seven nights, but then we had a night in Seattle, so. I think it was all total like nine, nine, nine days. Yeah. Didn't seem that, that short. Didn't seem that short. Seem yeah. longer. Well, when you go away for a week, it sometimes feels like you've been away for a month. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Um, Hi, Robin. Um, so yeah, those cabinets were Rob Kaz originals oh, yeah. for about maybe 
10 or 15 minutes until I saw them and then yeah. wipe them away. There, there was a Kira uh, windowsill or uh, um, the bottom of a French door where her two paw prints. I tried to, to lift it, yeah, lift the paint, but I couldn't. We've shared some pictures of that if you guys couldn't have do seen it. that. That was, that was special to us when we were in the other place, so it's too bad we weren't able to keep it. Um, there was another question. Hold on. Okay, we answered the one about planning the composition, right? Okay. Sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's always evolving. I mean, I, I really truly believe that you learn when you're painting. I mean, every piece, if it doesn't teach you something, then you're probably not doing it. Uh, you're, you're not doing something right because, you know, like pushing yourself, like if someone says, can you do that? I'm like, I guess we'll find out, you know, like, let's try it. Mm -hmm. um, with like with Star Wars, uh, you know, getting back to photorealism, and I and I say that very specifically, getting back to it because that was my job before I was a fine art painter was fine was realism. I was working on Madden football, doing photorealistic body parts and uniforms and things of that nature. So everything was getting. I think we were implementing linear lighting on uh, NCAA. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, the idea was to get more photoreal, so I kind of was trying to get back to that with with painting, and to me that that's fun is is trying something new, harder. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but that's why you learn and you move, do it, apply those lessons to the next one. And you know, failure is a, a very compelling teacher, so you never know until you try. Mm -hmm. Everybody's waiting. Yeah. Um, what else we got? Oh, there's so many well, questions that always come in, and now I'm blanking. Well, there was the the question about how to buy art online. Did you address that one already? So, sort of. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, we have a gallery locator that we try to keep up to date, um, and that usually a lot of them will sell online, uh, like. Uh, there was even an art consultant on earlier from uh, some uh, local gallery that, uh, you know, they, they reach out online and would be happy to connect. So uh, definitely try to um, uh, to reach out. And if you need help, that's why I'm here. So, hi Katie. Uh, what was the best part of your trip? Hello, Katie. I love Skagway. Um, it's just this small little mining town that hasn't really seen a whole lot of development and for me uh, we took a train an old style train up the white pass into the Yukon territory and went kayaking while it was sleeting in, mm -hmm. in Canada mm -hmm. and believe it or not that was actually the most fun I had the entire trip um, just because it's you know, there are so many things in life that when you look back, you'll remember. And things like that, I think, are, are definitely the, the types of things you would remember. And we had gone there a few years back as part of a work trip uh, with, with uh, uh, Royal Caribbean. And um, basically, we did a, a hike where we hiked up to a glacier, which was another one of those moments where you're just like, oh my god, did we just do that? And later that day, we felt it for sure. Um, but you basically, you know, life begins outside your comfort zone. And I think definitely getting into the frozen tundra of Canada was out of our comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, oddly enough, at the end of it, I felt great. I felt, I didn't even feel cold. Like if you see some of the pictures, I was wearing a t-shirt feeling great. Well, after all that. Yeah. I mean, it was like a full on workout. Work <laughs> In a windy but when lake. it started, oh, I was freezing. When we were oh. standing on the the sort of beach, I guess if you can call it that, off next to a lake. But we were standing there, mm. and there were like what what was it like ten of us maybe that had yeah. had opted to go kayaking. Oh, and the instructor Jeez. is standing there talking to us in his in his bare feet and his, or actually had sandals on, which he did take off the sandals. He Thanks, went Derek. barefoot when we went into the kayaks and when we got in the water and his shorts mm -hmm. and we're all standing around him with as many layers as we could possibly get on and we're still shaking and shimmer and he had just told us 
that the um, the water itself was 33 degrees, yeah. just above freezing. It was pretty cold. And so, yeah, we were, um, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to, to um, ever get warm, but yeah. I did warm up finally while we were kayaking. Yeah. But, but I it was great. I had gloves on. And the gloves got wet from the kayaking, and so my fingers got colder and colder and colder being wet, and I finally just had to take the gloves off, and then my hands actually got warm when I took the gloves off, believe it or not. You would think the opposite, but by, because they were wet. Anyway. But from an art perspective, you know, there's so many experiences and, and visuals that you can't get sitting at the easel. You just can't. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I struggle to think what a tax person would think of that explanation when when you go and you say yeah that trip was over which it wasn't um but at the same time uh you know if if you're if you're painting the same thing every day having an influence of, of something you know it doesn't have to be alaska it could be the bahamas it could be you know anywhere um it could be orlando uh, that that certainly is is a, a wonderful thing for an artist to be well rounded, uh, in a lot of ways. Experience other cultures, other viewpoints, and you know get down in the grass and see the frog's perspective. <clears throat> um, but that's uh, that's kind of the fun part about doing things like that. So thank you, Katie, and mm -hmm. I hope you're doing well in New Jersey on your way to Costa Rica. Costa Rica. <laughs> Costa, Rica. Costa Rica. Somewhere nice. C R. Hey, so what do we got? Derek hopes to meet you yep. sometime. Thanks, Derek. We've got some shows coming up. Maybe the one of those will be in your area. Yeah, lots of California. I know. Uh, they're yeah. It's pretty much summers have turned into the summer of California, and I'm not complaining. It's really nice. Do you know if? Do you know when or if you're gonna be? in Epcot in September. I don't know. They do food and wine at that time. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do those. I was, I almost was going to do flower and garden, but my schedule just literally blew up. So, uh, maybe not literally, but it definitely got busy. And, uh, unfortunately I couldn't do flower and garden at Epcot, but I do the art festival. Uh, from what I understand it's happening again. So hopefully we will be doing something with that one more time or, or many more. Um, but uh, September, I'm not sure specifically. And if you go to my website, we try to put everything that we know. Uh, and you know, things are always, you're trying to move things around. And uh, the other part of it isn't just what weekends I have available, what, what weekends I could feasibly create enough art to do a show for. So, you know, it's, it's, you can't just walk into the gallery and say, I'm here, they need stuff. So trying to, to manage production at the same time. So we're always juggling to see where, where we're at uh, and where, what we could do, so. And I don't know, um, if you do go to the website and look at the events, um, we're gonna, I'll try, I'm trying to keep them, well, first off, we do keep them updated. We use, we in the past have used Facebook events to populate mm -hmm. the events onto his website. And if you're at all familiar with um, some of the changes Facebook has seen lately. Oh, yeah. Um, there have been some changes to um, the developer tools as well. So, that being my side, I have been impacted by that, and we're still waiting on Facebook to approve a bunch of the different, um, um, the, 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 the way that you use the tools. Um, and so, um, right now, it's very unattractive on the website, <laughs> but it's functional. So, bear with that portion of it, but it, in the past, I've had a nice big way that you can subscribe to the events and get notifications if there's going to be one in your area according to what your um, your city is that you have registered with Facebook. And so right now, that's not really functional. So, but hang, bear with me. It'll it'll Facebook is slowly allowing some of those tools to come back into play, but with a lot of heavy changes. So, um, yeah, yeah, me too, Diane. I actually think he'll produce some pretty cool work from the trip. I, I think there's a few people who have said they can't wait to see what inspiration you took from well, even Alaska. The, the piece I just did was kind of Alaska inspired because uh, the, the first painting I did, which uh, the Franklin Zone, which you need to get in touch with me because uh, I have it uh, ready. Um, but, or I can get just message you, sorry. The second one that I, I literally is on 
uh, Facebook or sorry Instagram stories right now is uh, a, a, a wide piece where there's a lot of fish going in a particular direction and that was kind of inspired by Alaska because we were a little early for the salmon runs uh, but if we had been there maybe a month later uh, that place would have been alive with with fish trying to spawn upstream. And, you know, we went to those places and, uh, you know, right now they're just the little, little chum fish, but um, uh, the, uh, the idea of all this school of fish going in a, in a particular direction was kind of inspired by that. And then me anthropomorphized as Bo, uh, watching them all going, like, where are they headed off to? So that was kind of where that came from. Um, but again, the, the, the amount of ideas, doesn't, it doesn't always hit you right away, but uh, it definitely gives you a different perspective on things. Okay. Uh, so I, a question here, do you draw every day? And if so, how do you? Because I have hard times thinking of what to draw and what to start do, and want to start doing more. Well, that sort of ties into what I've literally just been talking about, um, is, is sometimes you have to get out uh drawing believe it or not does it is one of the hardest things to do every day uh, or just art in general uh from from a narrative point of view like abstract certainly uh i can't speak to that personally but uh there's there's a lot of mediums that you can do uh without trying to come up with a story like like i do um but if you if you take a sketchbook and you go for a walk you know, you might look up in a tree and see a particular leaf, maybe there's a bug on it. And that, that's, that's just kind of, fig ask yourself, how did that bug get there? How did I, you know, uh, not to get, what is that, a car song? Um, I was gonna say that uh, <laughs> This is not my beautiful house. How did I get there? That's um, where I was going with that too in my But head. just ask yourself questions about what you're seeing. Try to think a little deeper and then maybe it might spawn some ideas about uh, what to draw. You know, and, and I, I, I have put a lot into that question as it pertains to that frog, Beauregard. Um, but also there's the Traveling Girl series that, you know, is a little bit more depthy. You know, does this girl come and go there with her dog? Uh, I've been working on one painting forever uh, where she has the dog in a basket on the front of her bicycle and they're barking at pigeons flying away. And it's just, to me, there's... I haven't gone back to it, but I certainly need to. But the, the idea is just, you know, watching someone go to work and, and um, you know, where did, how did they, you know, what's their life like? And then maybe think about it on that level. And it doesn't have to be depthy. It can be just as simple as what's that cat looking at and, and just kind of draw. And There's some people that I follow on um, Instagram, some some artists that I don't know if they're full-time artists or they do it just you know because they enjoy it for you know they do it for fun for themselves or what but I've seen them a lot of times well they will go you know in the morning and get their coffee at Starbucks or wherever they're going and at the end of the day they post the sketches they made mm -hmm. sitting in the coffee shop yep. where you know it was literally like here's a guy at the counter here's two people sitting at a table chatting yeah. here's a lady walking in with her purse you know whatever. Yeah. And, and sometimes they're realistic drawings and sometimes right. they're more um, animated looking or definitely figurative drawing is something that has been a classical way of refining talent in illustration for hundreds of years if not thousands if you're talking about cave paintings and that uh, nature um, but uh, you know like she's saying go out and sit in a coffee shop and and you'll see people paint what you see who are literally posing for you they're just there like you know just doing nothing and sitting there, especially nowadays where people are like this half the time, you can, you can just uh, come up with so many different subjects. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's very hard. And I, I, I would say I feel for you because there are some days when you can't. I, I literally sat on, on our flight back. We had a couple of them back from Alaska. I was trying to kill time for hours. And I, had, I have seen every movie on Delta. I have all of them. So either I watch a rerun or I watch some news station that they're screaming at me or I draw and I tried drawing and really nothing came to me. So I forced myself and I just said, you know what, just draw a tree trunk. And I drew a tree trunk and not much came of it. 
And so I tried it again and not much came from it. And I just said, you know what? It's not the right time. And I watched the news stations that yelled at me. But, you know, it's not always going to be easy. But you, if you do it every day, you start to uh, realize that it gets easier. And, and repetition is really the only way that's going to come. Um, you know, to tell you a quick story, uh, I was on a ship. Uh, it was uh, Oceania Line. And they had me on doing the art auction thing. And... Um, there was a gentleman on Oceania, they had an artist in residence and he wasn't there that week. So they made me the involuntary, I was voluntold to teach a class. And so I taught a class uh, and I had brought, you know, some pre-made stuff. People could paint it in if they wanted to. And, and in the end, there was this one guy who was getting furious and his wife was rubbing his back and he's like, I don't understand. I can do anything and I can't do this. And, and so I come up and trying to just figure out what, what was going on and he's like i know what i want to do but i can't do it and i said all right all right no problem no problem it's just going to take some some trial and error to practice and you know you know over time you'll you'll see some regret but in his mind he thought i want to do this now I, I i have it up here i want it down there now and i said you know sir what do you do for a living and uh, he's like, uh, I'm, he, I'm, he's literally said to me, I'm a heart surgeon. And I'm like, well, Oceania, what's what you get? Um, but uh, I go, okay, uh, if I want to be a heart surgeon tomorrow, what, what do I have to do? He goes, you can't. You have to, you know, go to school and, you know, have residency and have someone to, and then in the middle of the sentence, he stops and he goes, I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's like, it's 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 going to be something that takes time it, you're not the the it's it's hard and that's what makes it worthwhile is is things that are hard are the things that if if everybody could do them then they wouldn't exist because everybody could do them so uh in the end i would say you know challenge yourself try and it will be hard and there are some days that things won't come to you but definitely just try all right <clears throat> the art of rex do you ever use digital mediums like to plan your paintings, such as Photoshop? Uh, not so much uh, anymore. Uh, like, well, when I first started animation, everything was digital. Uh, I, I literally learned on Photoshop uh, to, to, to manipulate photos, obviously. You know, when you're a college kid, it's what you do. Um, but uh, as I got into more and more of the animation Photoshop became a tool to use with Maya or ZBrush or things of that nature. Um, but um, nowadays with the lone exception of this is going to be Star Wars where some of these ships are so very complex and I'm struggling not to curse right now because they're just like, it's like the people who designed them weren't thinking about fine art when they did them because it's just like, oh my God, how am I gonna paint that? Um, so like when, when you're talking about like, uh, like the Millennium Falcon, for example, at certain angles, it's just like, there's so much going on that I literally have gone in and made a library of digital models in Maya using Photoshop for the textures and things like that. But I, I use Maya to create uh, we'll call them mock-ups. They're not fully rendered. They're not perfect. They're not screen ready, but they help me with angles and uh, They help me with making a, a particular ship, especially when I, I am not Like versed with so like a lot of these new ships like the solo Millennium Falcon and uh, some of the, uh, the, the the different things uh, I don't know. There's so many of them lately uh, they, they are very difficult for me to just pull out of my head and say, yeah, from that one, the U-wing looks like this. No, it's just, uh, you know, you have to think about it. So having a model that's close, it certainly gets through Lucasfilm approvals, uh, helps me greatly with establishing sight lines and things of that nature. And, uh, but from when I get going, I, I kind of just, you know, um, just get right to painting so that being said typically with my own fine art or disney or anything like that digital media has nothing to do with it until i scan them and then they you know then i have a jpeg all right next question is from long lost disney princess oh wow 
Do you use anything to seal or gloss a painting when you've finished it? And would you do the same with acrylic? Uh, well, I'll start with acrylic. I've never heard of people doing anything protective to them. It doesn't mean they don't, it's just I've not heard of it. Um, with oil paint, varnishing is kind of uh, an interesting thing because you're really getting into uh, science. You know, whoa, the S word. The oil painting is like a chemistry set and you really have to think about it in terms of pH and solvents and uh, uh, you know things lasting 100 years and whatnot, uh, uh, which is what they're designed to do. I mean, I think acrylics are relatively new uh, within the past 50 years, where oil paints have been around since cave paintings. So uh, that's why one of the reasons I love oil paint is because I know it will last a millennia if taken care of. And varnishing is part of that process. So with a painting, traditionally speaking, you were supposed to, you're, you paint a piece and you let it cure on whatever substrate you choose, whether that's canvas or a rock wall or whatever. Uh, I mean, Leonardo da Vinci painted on asbestos. That didn't really work out, but he tried it. Well, the cavemen yeah, that varnishing was the rock theirs? Wall. Yeah, no, the cavemen weren't varnishing theirs. And yet but they last. They last because they're in a protected environment. And typically they're on okay. a negative surface, so right. dust Not and stuff. Right, not getting weather won't. and stuff, yeah. usually, because they're inside, yeah. So, like, like uh, varnishing has undergone a lot of scientific advancements. It used to be rabbit uh, wax or something. Uh, I forget now. They st you actually can still buy all this stuff, people who go old school with their, their stuff. But um, nowadays, sh you know, being a, a fine artist, by trade, I can't wait months and months for my oil paintings to cure fully. And in the beginning, I was not varnishing them. And that's because literally when I handed it over, if I were to have varnished it, the painting would have never cured right and could potentially have cracked. But then not long after I found a product uh, made by uh, Gamblin called Gamvar, and it, it is permeable. So a painting can still cure while uh, it's protected and it brushes on it's very easy and um that that's the one i recommend for people the, the gambar gloss is the one i recommend not the satin or the matte don't do that because i don't it, i had some adverse effects with those ones and if gambling's listening call me i'll tell you what happened uh so with that being said uh definitely have to protect your oil paintings uh and varnish is the way the traditional way to do it all right, another question from Instagram. This is from Emma. When's the next time you're gonna be painting in Disney? Um, well, to the public, uh, I'm not really sure to be honest with you. Uh, I'm, I'm working, uh, there's something going on for Toy Story Land, but- um, Hey, 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 yeah, hey nothing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I can't talk about that, but- um, But you just did, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing on the books, we'll say that. Uh, there's certainly, you know, there's always the art festival that seems to be happening every year, uh, and uh, food and wine. The local, usually come out local once or gallery twice. and uh, food and wine. You know, it it all depends on my schedule, really. Uh, I think you'll probably find me in California this summer at Disneyland, uh, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> but again, I always put it on my my uh, my website whenever I know, uh, or at least I can announce it. Well, I don't know what soon is, Emma, but he's got, uh, he's going to be out of town most of yeah. June and July. <laughs> California. And now August is July filling up and, too, so uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I never know. I am local, and I always tell them I'll come by anytime they want, so. The galleries. The, yeah. yeah. Not, I mean, Disney's not, I mean, yeah, we hop over to Disney yeah. all the time, but we're, <laughs> we're pass holders, so yeah. we, we, um, we use that for just fun, not for work. Um, here's one that just came oh. in on Instagram. How did you get noticed by Disney or did you make them notice you? And that was going to say, that's one I had down here because everyone always asks, yeah, everybody always how asks, did you get to be a Disney artist? Disney or Star Wars or you yeah. name it. And, and I think it has to do with the industry. Uh, there's a lot of different avenues people take. Um, my story is going to be different from everyone else's, but my particular story was 
I was doing very well on, on cruise ships, doing art auctions. Uh, you know, I wasn't in residence or anything. Uh, I just, you know, they'd say, oh, we got a cruise lined up. You're going out of the Oasis of the Seas out of Fort Lauderdale. And uh, I, would, I would go on. Um, but they, uh, they, they certainly paid attention um, and uh, at that point it just kind of took off but um, really everybody's going to be different but I, I'd like to think that having your own personal artwork uh, established is, is, a, is a, a good organic way of becoming a licensed artist to just make it a little more general from Disney you know if whether you're Star Wars or anything if you have your own robust personal line of work then you certainly people know what to expect and you know you can go into the game with uh, full speed so rather than trying to mimic what other people are doing so licensing is so weird uh, in that way and I can only recommend that you, you you definitely come in with a style and check out the medium story because he goes oh, into yeah. a little more detail about how he became an artist and you know some of the um, I guess, I mean, a, a Disney artist, but also some of the ins and outs once you are a Disney artist, you know, how um, there might be some, you know, some some sort of uh, rules set in place of what you can and can't do. And, and just to throw a little wrench into this, there's also many, many different kinds of Disney artists. There's obviously the film artists, there's the Disney fine artists, and uh, things like, you know, if you're walking down Main Street, they will have people sketching arm and a leg stuff. Uh, and you know, there's so many facets to it. So, you know, try to figure out, you know, what you're interested in and then maybe go that direction. Because at one point in my life, my, life's, my, my goal in life was to work at Pixar. I swear that if they had called, even right now, if they said, hey, I might be like, oh, uh, <laughs> really? Well, let's talk. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely think about the different avenues uh you know there's there's everything there's even marketing stuff like yellow shoes and uh blue sky with imagineering and yeah, things of like that there's nature endless opportunities in art especially um, with a disney. huge company yeah. like disney and other companies too uh when when i left uh when before i went to video games i was thinking about moving to california and working for dreamworks they were hiring big time for what i now think is kung fu panda um but uh, the, the idea was that, uh, you know, jobs are kind of, I mean, they're not always where you live. And certainly uh, there's a lot of facets to all different uh, industries. Mm -hmm. And um, I lost my train of thought on that one. It had something to do with the Disney art. Um, You're welcome, Bobby. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, this is talking shop to me. I, uh, uh, you know, for me, I don't look at my career as something of like great note. Like I wasn't keeping tabs in the bio, like, like writing my biography is so difficult because we can't, I can't even really put the timeline straight sometimes because I wasn't trying to remember. I was just simply trying to stay in the business. You know, I mean, you work for a company and then they, the funding starts wishy washy and, you know, and then I move into video games and, uh, you know, I figured out that I didn't want to be in a cubicle and, uh, you know, and then fine art was like, I kept hearing great things about it. I'm like, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And then the recession happens and, oh, it's, <laughs> it, it's certainly looking back kind of a, a tumultuous experience, but at the same time, I learned but so you, much. I was going to say, you did not let the timing of yeah you know the, the world's economy <laughs> yeah i mean dictate when it was that you decided to jump into you know, I, I, your dreams so. yeah i mean I, do what makes you happy and i it, it won't be easy but you have to try i know what i was going to say about the disney thing was a lot of people get confused with um what what you do in terms of um like you don't you don't work for right. disney as an artist um, a lot of yeah. people think that you I receive could, a no. paycheck from Disney as an employee, and right. that is not the case. Right. This, what he does is... Um, and it's it's not helped that, that there are some license. artists that, that 
to call themselves Disney artists, and, and it just makes the waters murkier as far as the separation. But well, there are, I like to I say, say I work with Disney because I'm, literally they just called me, and you know, like you know, they, there's there's sorry, I wasn't supposed to talk about that. Um, we uh, we uh, basically the uh, the idea is that I enjoy the best of both worlds. I I can come home. I have no boss. But I, trying I, to explain what it is is it's a license. Yeah. And he has been um, through a, you know through another company granted license to paint the Disney films, and that's why also he does have certain restrictions. Like there are licensed mm -hmm. artists for the films, there are licensed artists for the park attractions. There's mm -hmm. you know so there's vari variations yeah. on the types of license you have. So he can paint um, films, right? Um, and sometimes and, many shorts, it, yeah. and shorts and you know Mickey and Minnie doing anything kind of counts right. too is, is because they're yeah. in shorts and they're part of the Disney sort of um, I guess the animated end of it it's not a park attraction right. but if somebody wanted me to paint the Epcot ball I mm -mm. I decline yeah. because it's not part of my license yeah right um, the, so that yeah but the same thing with people wanting me to put in their faces or their kids with Mickey Mouse, I don't, I, it's not part of my license either. So, um, that's, that's, there are certain things I shy away from, but again, that goes back to how, how you get, uh, you know, what group you're with Disney, uh, whether you're within the company or, uh, outside the company, uh, many people are outside the company and I'm one of them. Um, and, and the, the, uh, I see someone's asking, how do you get invited? Uh, that's, that's kind of, it's not something you can yeah, really... you can't really apply or I submit. mean, you can. It's you can invitation. send them stuff. I've heard of people doing that. But everybody has a different way of, uh, of getting involved with the company. And uh, for the me... The main thing you can do, though, is to, yeah, for is me, to build I your own a, art. Yeah, just I, paint. I definitely and, tried to build the, 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 the friends, friends along the way, way and the places right. I'd rather be sides of my work that were either landscape heavy or character heavy and I really think I really truly believe that that's got what's got me noticed mm -hmm. uh, throughout my career yeah. and even now you know we, we definitely I, I look at that as where I want to be as an artist you know I'm having a lot of fun with licensing uh, with Star Wars and Disney and Pixar and uh, Warner Brothers and Peanuts and and part of that too is, and we touch on this on the Medium article, so definitely go read that, um, the article. Yeah. It's, you know, it's Medium, and then his handle at Medium is Rob Kaz Art, so at Rob Kaz Art. But, um, but you can, can you, you can find a link on the website. Um, yeah, I think I have it on there. That's in the FAQs, I think it if is. If not, we'll post it after this. Yeah. Um, we'll post it in. But, um, but what I was going to say, though, is that you do address one thing that is kind of important if you want to get that invitation, <laughs> that, um, you know, don't... If you, if you love Disney so much, respect the brand and respect mm -hmm. the license and don't, um, you know, don't skirt that. Like, don't start yeah. painting Mickey Mouse and selling it on Etsy because that is yeah. disrespecting the brand that you want to work for, you know? So it's, yeah. I think it's very important that you, you build your, you know, your, your, your own sure. style and your own concept. But in a positive way, that's the fun of art is putting your stamp on things. You know, for mm -hmm. me, I want to be known in a hundred years or a thousand years by what I've painted and uh, certainly creating your own style will, will, will do that. Um, Sean Woodward. Oh, hi, Sean. This is, uh, uh, he's not just some guy. This is somebody I went to school with. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, where can you get some of my Star Wars works? Uh, certainly, definitely galleries uh, will be the place I would refer you to. Not all of them carry Star Wars, but certainly uh, many do. And if they don't, encourage them to. Um, the other part of that is sometimes in the theme parks. Uh, they will have park exclusives and things of that nature. Um, so if you're in uh, California, I think D Street, if it still exists. I don't know, they're doing a lot with Downtown Disney over there. Uh, and in Off the Page, I think there might be some Star Wars or Disney. Uh, that's... And there's a couple of pieces on his publisher's site too. Right, there um, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think links are, we can put links at the end of this for, for those things. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't believe it's on the DisneyStore.com. But not the, the Star Wars, but yeah, there's the Disney, Disney art on there. But there's, yeah. there's some of your Disney art on there, but not your yeah. Star Wars. Over here art. on the East Coast, you'll find it in the launch bay. Uh, yeah, and, at Hollywood Studios. Um, it was occasionally in other places, but they, they keep moving things around here in Orlando. So I, I can't really say for sure, other than maybe the launch bay and uh, some of the galleries in the area. We, so. we hear the requests that come in like almost every day on the emails, uh, you know, email, com email comments that come in through the website asking where to buy artwork online. Right. And all I can say is that we feel your pain. <laughs> we are online shoppers. Yeah. We prefer not to go in a store and haggle a price yeah. or anything else, but um, just at least for right now, um, most of the work is going to be in a gallery. So even if you can't set foot in the gallery um, because there's not one near you, you can Contact call them. them. Yeah. yeah, you can call them. You can even email them. Um, most of the most of the galleries do have an email address. And if you want to find out where those galleries are, your website is robcasart.com. And if you do slash locations, or it's in the menu too, then um, right. So so look for that. But we know yeah. there's a We're need. Trying. We know there's a need to get. Um, to sell things online. There's just a lot of conflict with license. Yeah. Um, who owns the license? Do they allow you to sell online? You know, there's there's a lot of um, challenges, but we're hoping that eventually those can all be worked through. But right now... We're doing our best. The, right now, it's, <laughs> it's galleries, yeah. Uh, so that, that, long story short, um, galleries and some locations within the theme parks. So. Sean says, we'll be down in Orlando later this summer, so we'll definitely look good. And maybe we can at that time tell you for sure where, <laughs> where some of those pieces are. Um, saw some Star Wars at Wild Gallery today. Cool. Um, here, I missed one. Let me yeah, scroll we're, back. We're oh, trying yeah. to keep okay. up. I haven't yeah, we're seen on, any coming. Yeah, for Facebook. anybody just joining us, we're on YouTube, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram all at the same time. Um, did you recommend setting up? Do you recommend setting up at certain art shows? Oh, oh yeah. Well, this is something I did after I left. EA, I started doing, well, I started with farmer's markets because I really didn't know any better. Um, and that was a very good teaching tool because I was trying to sell my wares in a place people were buying vegetables and you really get some honest opinions. Uh, and that's good. You know, I, I look at that as a learning experience, even though I didn't really do all that well. Um, but as far as art shows, that was kind of where I progressed to after that. And uh, I don't know where you're located Florida certainly has the most amount of art shows anywhere I've ever heard of. Um, Michigan has a few, New York has a few, California has a few, um, but certainly Florida with the, 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 the base of collectors was, oh, there we go, um, was uh, certainly something that, uh, you know, you could go from Florida, you could go from show to show to show and follow different groups around. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend any, not because they were bad, but just because it's been so long, I don't want to say anything and have it be 10-year-old uh, information or more. I, I don't even know how many years, but it's been a lot. Um, I can tell you that I first debuted Bo at the Ocala Arts Festival in, in Florida, just north of Orlando, and it did very well, starting something. <laughs> That, I was gonna say that's yeah. what that's what resulted in Bo yeah. being a continued. I had a lot character. of luck on the East Coast, going from like Cocoa Beach down to say uh, north of Miami. Uh, certainly, that was my sweet spot for for my work. But you know, I, I knew I, I knew a guy who sold sculptures of, of they were like kitchen things where you could put a chicken in a pot. Uh, this put a beer can in it and he sold hundreds of them for like 20 bucks a piece and he would go home with like ten thousand dollars making these little chicken pot things and so it all depends and he he had the most luck on the uh the, the other coast the west coast uh naples all the way up to tampa so uh, i think you have to have at those art shows though i think you have to have something really unique like that yeah. or um sort of a niche area I mean, because i personally saw a lot of people you know seem like they just weren't having the day they wanted when they oh, were yeah. at these festivals and not to mention not to mention the heat i mean i don't know 
Oh yeah, where Florida from, gets so hot. Down here, it get the and they do them primarily yeah. in the, the warmer months, so it's. Whew. Yeah, I I definitely would recommend times of year. I I had my the most success from like December to to May, and not much outside of that. Uh, you could do your whole season then. But you could do some some decent business in October and uh, even September. I mean, really, it's it's what's right for you. So I can't really go in too much. And I think we're going down the rabbit hole on this this question. But uh, I definitely, just, I learned a lot from doing festivals. I was gonna say that's a good place to start, but don't make that your career. <laughs> I mean, unless you like it, people did okay, that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. There are it. people who do it as a career. Absolutely. They loved it. But it just wasn't for me. For, I was gonna say that's from my point of view. Like. I was like, after yeah. maybe you did the 10th or 12th one, I was like, okay, we gotta find another way. Yeah, they, I mean, I, I was debating going back to EA after that because it was like cubicle or 10th. You know, I think a cubicle with free cereal and all the stuff. And like gave all you. of them have an Gym entry fee and, because they're. Yeah, you have to pay uh, to be there. Yeah, you, Some of them you have an entry fee to get in, and then you have the entry fee, then you have, um, you know, I don't think any of them charged a percentage of your sales or anything like some that. Some of them did. did. I never some went to them. Did. Yeah. Okay. I never liked that. Yeah. But anyway. So, Moving um, on. someone says, uh, so I love to draw and sculpt and I'm really trying to get into animation, but I don't know where to start. Well, uh, that's a little, I would say it's a little easier, but, um, animation is one of those things that I, I liken it to being like a pro major league baseball player where there's only so many slots and kids every day trying to get into those positions so uh, definitely uh, get educated I always encourage everyone to go to school I mean that could be anything from going to uh, like where I went I went to UCF for criminal justice but uh, I would go and I'd draw people in the hallway and stuff um, and learn Photoshop on my own. But uh, certainly if, if you wanted to work in game design, going to a place like UCF could teach you very well on how to do that. Uh, there's, um, you know, like uh, in the film industry, you know, going to, to like Cal Arts or something and learning, uh, you know, from some of the, the best and the brightest in the industry is, is a way you could go. Uh, but you're looking at someone who didn't go to school for animation and worked in animation and video games. So, um, you know, it's, it's not that you can't, it just depends on how you learn best. And some people learn best by instruction and some people learn best by self, uh, being self-taught. But it's I would just say this, that I had, I was working in the industry and learning at the same time. My, my, my situation was so unique where I was basically getting some of the best on-the-job training from ex-Disney talent. I was one of the few non-Disney people in the entire building, and I think at one point I was the only non-Disney. Um, so definitely education, education, education. If nothing else, just for the rest of your life to have something to fall back on. Um, but uh, so that that would be the way I would go for for animation. Uh, but again, animation is like. 5,000 jobs, you know, sit at the end of an animated film and see how many credits go by and each one of them has a different position within animation. You know, you could work in HR in animation uh, or, or graphic design for the menus on the DVD. I mean, there's just so many different places uh, to, to be involved in that. So definitely figure out what you want to do, what would interest you the most. Uh, I know when I was coming out of animation going to video games the the big focus was effects animators like it was kind of a, a big emphasis for studios for they would hire anybody but i wasn't one of them didn't want to be one of them oh no it was it's maybe it, you would have but it's a you? lot of programming <laughs> a lot of looking at dots and simulations and solvers solvers, solvers. i don't even know what that is spring solver Okay. Well, are there any more questions? Because we've been at this over an hour. Have we? Yeah. But I like talking shop, so this is fun. I know you do. But that's why I was just kind of, you know, going to see if there's any more questions. Yeah, and... trying to see if there's any going on. Yeah, you two's been quiet tonight. We saw Solo today. Yeah, that was pretty cool. No Finally. spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. I'm not giving any. Oh, it's no. so tough when 
for me because like with with being part of the fine art process we can get our hands on some advanced materials and i didn't do that with this film but it's been very hard images and scenes not not movies well not like plot synopsis or anything like that yeah. but full characters and all that things and things that could get me in a lot of trouble if i leaked them so uh, i enjoyed solo so if any yeah, star wars fans out there i, I kind of wish that it was doing better than it is uh but i blame the marketing department for that one because the film was was fun. for me as a star wars fan i really enjoyed it i think i went into it struggling a little bit with the idea that somebody else was solo or han and not harrison ford and i know he mm. couldn't play you know a 20 year old version of himself however however old the guy i keep was, comparing it to like james bond when sean connery left it took a little while for people to get used to it but yeah. in today's world where box offices are like stock tickers uh, i think you have to uh holiday fans out there anybody um the uh the idea is that there probably won't be more movies from these guys uh will there be a, another freebie friday yeah we we intend to do them i just i literally was on a boat in alaska or well the in in seattle and that whole day was just... And I promised a, a giveaway tonight because we missed the oh, last Friday. Oh, we did. Friday. Oh. Mm -hmm. See? So, so he stick around. Even, yeah. He doesn't even know. Um, yeah. Oh, Dwayne, yeah, he didn't... He quit, He stopped his personal page on Facebook. Yeah, no, that, that is something that people definitely don't understand because there's to have a business page at one point, you needed a personal page. And I, I am focus solely on these other ones like literally it's too much i mean right now i'm looking at four different things uh looks like the matrix um but the the <laughs> the, 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 pro the personal facebook one is it literally it's like three quarters of the messages i get are spam and the other quarter have nothing i mean they're 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 things that could easily be answered if they had not gone to my personal page and gone to the business one so the business page is at rob Kaz art uh, my personal one is just Rob space Kaz and uh, I, I, I try I, I, I keep telling people over and over to the point where I just was turning blue and I just said you know what I'll put something up that just says please go here and uh, I have gotten some negative feedback about it but literally I wasn't posting anything so I don't know what they're upset about uh, hi tomorrow <laughs> oh and when do you ship the books he says this month yeah. Hopefully this month, yeah. Um, yeah, we just I gave the whole explanation earlier, but um, basically the books arrived in um, New York after traveling across the ocean from the UK, which is where they were printed, um, on this past weekend. And so we should see them within, uh, we think next week, because it took last time to, to make it through customs and then to get travel, to travel down here to Florida. It took, I think it was um, almost two weeks. So I think we should see them this next week. And again, we will post the heck out of it. So like last time we did a live video when the thing pulled up and literally almost dropped it off the back. But that's another <laughs> story. Um, if you weren't there for that, you missed out. Yeah, and as but. far as Freebie Fridays, I see Bobby commented hopefully later than 3 p.m. We, we tried, I think, was it six o'clock or nine o'clock? Uh, we tried a later version and th three o'clock is sort of where we started, but uh, we definitely have been talking about other times. Yeah, but well, unfortunately, the one we did later did not. Um, we didn't. We didn't have as many people that tuned in, mm -hmm. so we might have to stick with the three p.m. So I don't we'll know. See. It's it's tough. It really is tough. I, it, I, it's it's a hard thing because we are three hours off from California. The, yeah, from California, and then of course you yeah. know we're six hours from Hawaii. And then, I don't know if you know, but Florida has decided to... to well, they, um, we're trying to stay on Atlantic time. Yeah, so they, they there might come a point in time in which we're four hours away yeah. from California. And <laughs> so we may not do uh, daylight savings or whatever. Uh, what is Freebie Friday? I see that pop up. For those of you who don't know, I literally give something away every week called Freebie Fridays with Friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, the name... Why are you point at me? <laughs> Oops. Oh, hold on. We'll go back. The person who asked was on the one that just disappeared. So. Yep. It, I'll tell you what happened. It. Um, we we went too long. Yeah. It cuts off after sixty minutes. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Oh, we'll let, let them come Instagram back. populate back up with the person who was on there before you finish answering that. <laughs> it's but. gonna be. Like, 
Yeah, Instagram goes. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, so Instagram shuts off after sixty minutes of yeah, sorry live about video. That. Sixty minutes. Uh, so back. Uh, waiting for him to come back. I forget who asked it. Uh, I think it began with a C. Um, but anyway, yeah, freebie friends with friends is just something we're, we've been trying to do regularly to to have fun. I mean, what more fun? Well, than... it started because you did a giveaway one time. We was like, you were just like, I just want to do a giveaway or something. I don't remember why, but we did a giveaway. We were at Animal Kingdom. Remember, you tuned in from Animal Kingdom, and actually, you wound up having me. You that was when you had a really bad. Um, or something. Oh and, yeah, yeah. We were at Animal Kingdom. I remember that. And you were afraid that talking so much was going to make you cough, yeah. and so. Okay, you back. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So sorry about that. Yeah, Sixty sorry. minutes, and Instagram cuts us off. But basically, Free Bird Fridays with Friends is a giveaway we do every week on Friday, typically at three o'clock. I, I would like to do it later, but we three tried Eastern. that. Three o'clock Yeah, three o'clock Eastern time. Um, but, uh, you know, in all honesty, uh, we, we definitely love hearing back from everyone about times and ideas and things of that nature. I mean, the idea of social media is interaction. So, uh, we're, we're keeping it at three o'clock at least for right now, cause that in our world, that makes a lot of sense, but obviously different time zones and different things. So, and we have, um, we're giving away we free have a stuff. question each week. <laughs> There's yeah. a question each week. Oh, and yeah. the question is based on. Um, you know, something that was mentioned in his social media the week before. So it, you, you would have to have tuned in, you know, at least at some point during the week and looked at his social media. And then the question is based on that. And then every week it's a different giveaway. Yeah. So it might be one of his collectible pins. It might be. We do prototyping a lot. A so they're sometimes giveaway. they're one-offs, you know, in this case, is this the new one? We gave no, away an one. umbrella. Right. Oh, oh. Oh, he wants to show the new one he just had made. Yeah. Like, I, I'm a big fan of simplicity, I, I especially with art. So this one's a little bit more involved, but then I got one with that's a little bit simpler. You know? Where's your fitted one? Where's the um, flex fit? I really like that one a lot. Mm. That's, uh, I don't really know. Down the Okay. Well, I think it's downstairs. Yeah, don't worry about it. But basically, if you go to my shop, if you go to my shop, you can see that there's a variety of different styles. Well, we don't have the flex fit on there yet, and we don't have this new one on there yet, but they're coming. <laughs> Soon. So flex fit, and then this guy. Yeah. Which is one. This one you can see is like um, more detailed. It's got, it's got the black in his eye. It's got a shadow around his body. Um, Shameless plug. It's got the line for his to separate his feet out, and this one is. Um, it's more of a silhouette. Yeah, it's like a silhouette. So there's no, there's no black in the eye. There's okay. no outline. But that's what shadows. I like. So, for me, as much as I like the fully rendered ones, I, I definitely prefer the. Uh, I like this one. See, but I, I yeah, I <laughs> try new. Strokes. For me, it's fun to just prototype things, and and that certainly is one of them. Uh, we're not giving those away, but. I, I, I think we have given away hats in the past. What is this painting? Oh, yeah. This is, um, what is this called? Uh, Albatross. Albatross, that's right. Yeah, Dwayne asked that. It's called Albatross. Yeah, there you go. And it's ginormous. It's on the website. So, and that's the original. <laughs> yeah. It's so big that galleries didn't ask for it. No, um, I don't know, it's just there's certain ones we wanted to keep. Uh, it's, it's a luxury as far as I'm concerned, keeping art and, uh, there's only a couple pieces I have, and this is one of them. Lewis says, have you done any pieces that are way out of your comfort zone? Oh, yeah. Mm. And a lot of the pieces that you see me doing now regularly were ones that were well outside my comfort zone. At one point. Doing airplanes was once out of, out of my comfort zone. Um, I think uh, Star Wars, when I first started, was... I wouldn't say it was outside my comfort zone, but it was definitely border on borderline. Uh, because I was doing a lot of whimsy and color and I didn't know how to bring in the yeah under place I'd rather be doing um, definitely wanted to bring in uh, something more serious but at the same time bring that color into it so the challenge was outside of my comfort zone like I could have rendered them the same as you saw them on screen but what's the fun in that uh, so let me just fix that a little bit so you can't see my stomach <laughs> Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, uh, that's 
the most important thing to me as an artist is being pushed creatively. Uh, so, and the people who, who come to the Epcot Art Festival might have seen this a few times and the staff uh, we had at, at the, the, the booth where my fine art was displayed, the Coleman booth was, was really fun at this because I would do little paint sketch studies that, that uh, we would sell later and they were sometimes ones that people were like calling out to me. So uh, you could probably check back through social media. I think, I think on Instagram, there are probably still some posts, maybe even Facebook. Um, but uh, definitely there were um, some ones like flamingos and hippos mm -hmm. and- uh, Which the, I loved, I thought they were great. Yeah, um, shout out to the people at Animal Kingdom with, um, I forget the, it's, it's a German name. Uh, it's not Fitzium, that's from Spies. The hippo? Yeah. It's Augustus. Augustus. It Augustus. was German. I, thought it was I don't know if Peggy's still on, but she would yeah. have been able to answer that. But that was, that was based on an interaction with some of the cast members from the Animal Kingdom. And they were like, oh, did you know we have a new baby hippo? And I'm like, oh, really? Uh, so that... So that um, set us out, like, going to Animal Kingdom two or three times a week trying to catch and a glimpse of... <laughs> Sorry, a baby Augustus. We, we did many a trip to Animal Kingdom to try to see baby Augustus. We finally did. But the idea was that you could see me just being challenged on a day-to-day -day basis with people just shouting out, paint me a chinchilla. I'm like, what's a chinchilla? You know, like I had to look it up and then I would do it. Uh, obviously, uh, it was just all for fun. But, um, you know, that to me is the most fun part of, of art is it's sort of like going to like a piano bar and the, the guy not knowing the song, but trying it anyway. We actually, we saw that one night over at Disney Springs. There, oh, was yeah. a, there was a band that was playing and they were doing Disney songs, but people were like, do you know this one? And they didn't know it, but- But they tried. They tried it anyway. And I didn't know, I wasn't the wiser. They had never played it before. And yeah, I mean, they knew the song, but they, they didn't, you know, they yeah, had they never, never played it. Never so. arranged it, you yeah, know? Yeah, and, yeah. and so that was, um, that was fun to watch. I don't know if, if any of you are local, but um, it seems like they're a new group out there and they were really cool to watch. So. Um, to Lewis think. said, I'm from the Force oh, Choke yeah. podcast. Thanks for mentioning that. Oh, you're doing that next month. Oh, yeah. Is it the end of this month? I, I have to look back at the calendar, I, but coming no. up soon. <laughs> I think it's actually. The I, end I don't of even this know month. what day it is, if that helps you month. understand where I'm at right now. Like, I think it's Wednesday. He's like week by week right now. Week yeah. by week. I'm getting tongue twisted. And I don't even know what time it is because I'm so thrown off. In Alaska, we were four hours behind. And now we're yeah. back. I'm still, like I'm waking up at like 10.30. We were four hours behind in Alaska. Then we moved it into Canada and we were back to three hours. Mm. Yeah. So I'm all messed up. And now we're back here. So when you ask me what show I'm going to be at, I have to go, uh, where am I now? <laughs> I literally have forgotten where I was at certain shows. That's really bad. But it's, you know, you travel all day, next thing you know you're doing a show. Oh, and somebody you goes, act like it's so horrible. It, well, it's, it can be difficult. Traveling is fun. Traveling is fun. Sure. I like it. Uh, and thank you, Bobby, for collecting so many of the studies. That was, uh, I remember. She's got three of them. Yeah. Awesome. What were the three, if you? She got Still a whale, fun. I remember that. It was a whale, okay. Um, what kind of whale did you do? I think Kill? she got one of the cats. No, I did a, I think I did a, like a baby humpback. Oh. Was it a baby humpback? Okay. I don't uh, know if I remember the whale. But uh, I think maybe one of the cats. I forget now. I, I tried, I used to know, there was many years ago, I used to know where all of my originals were in the world. Uh, where, where each one sold. You know, I could tell you some to this day, and uh, I know the ones that uh, were some of my favorites, I can tell you. I can tell you where some of them are. <laughs> yeah, at least one. <laughs> Just a few of them here in our I, in I can our tell house. you where the works in progress are, too. There were some of them that I told him I wasn't going to let go of. They were um, like the traveling girls. Yeah. Like, those are ours. I wanted, I wanted those. Um, but most of them, we, you know, if somebody... If a gallery says we want that, then yeah, I remember we held on to fine. Surf Shack forever. Yeah, he didn't want to let that one go. He loves Surf Shack. And finally, I got convinced to let that one. Someone go. Someone wanted it. 
Yeah, the whale, I was right. Whale koi, and koi, a bow, and, bow and two friends. Okay. The full moon. Yeah. Okay, cool. I remember that one. Yeah. Very nice. So you were right that she had the whale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because when she walked up, I didn't know I was painting a whale. I was kind of just, yeah, why not? <laughs> Which is kind of how it goes sometimes. You know, the, the Rorschach test of painting, uh, ink blot test, where you just kind of swirl some things around and it, like, like clouds, you can start to see shapes and you just kind of render them out. But that's fun, you know? It's kind of like riffing. Not that I would know, but it would seem like a good metaphor. Okay. All right. And, yeah. Oh, I would love to have a traveling girl. Oh, well, you'll have to fight me over it, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> there's some that got out. Well, there's uh, one that got out, but that's because it was a commissioned traveling girl. Yeah, there was one someone commissioned of, of her crossing a bridge, mm -hmm. looking down. I remember that mm -hmm. one. Um, but I, then the rest of them we kept like they yeah. i think you you had prints of them like 815 we kept which was the first one the, and that was the one i actually sat for yeah he needed to see how a foot flip-flop would hang off of a foot yeah for someone sitting on a bench and my kitchen table had a bench so i sat there <laughs> that's right i forgot <laughs> with about my that. legs crossed and my flip-flop hanging off oh, my foot a while ago so yeah so that was um, i am doing one right now but it's I talked about it a little earlier where a uh, traveling girl is, I gotta give her a name, I guess it's Doris, but uh, she's on a bicycle, but the, the, the dog, which is Bo, is in the basket, and uh, they're kind of going through this sort of, I'll call it a, an old world urban setting, so like a bridge, but a, a wave wall, and you know, I, I've seen them in places, never, never, couldn't really put a, pl a, a a particular city on this this painting but it's kind of old urban and she's riding a bike and Bo is howling that the dog is howling at the front because there's all these birds everywhere and they're taking off I just thought it was fun but I haven't finished it it's it's, it's I would say it's about two-thirds done a question from Instagram what surface do you paint on the most uh, my hands is usually where it gets most of it no uh, canvas canvas is is my preferred uh, medium, I guess that would be, no. Stretch canvas. Yes, uh, the substrate, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, the reason I like canvas is for a couple reasons. One, if canvas gets dented, you could restretch it. If a canvas tears, you can, you know, trim it down a little bit more. Um, it's easier on the hand when you're doing certain things. It, it gets a little bouncy, so it, it's it's almost like having Nike Airs on, where it's just a little squishier in the application. Um, uh, this this episode is sponsored by Nike. Um, <laughs> the the I have worked on like especially when I'm traveling, I will bring. She's cracking up. Um, I mean, it's the, late. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 to me it's six o'clock. Yeah. Um, 6:40. The uh, the I'll use sometimes I use on on uh, canvas mounted on board, so uh, panel is probably the the best way of calling it that. Um, uh, whether it's wrapped or trimmed or what have you, and I do that more out of necessity because when you're sitting there at a gallery and I'm doing some of the studies, it's easier to hold the panel in in your lap than it is to put it up over what you're already working on. So it's, it's, it's a logistical thing that I use panel for that, but I prefer the, the canvas and the stretch. Someone had asked me actually, I remember this question now is, what kind of canvas should I get? Whoa, finger. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I forgot you have to touch it. Yeah. Um, but basically when you're buying canvas, I think the one lesson I've learned more over than anything is that make sure it's staple back. Um, and not even staple side, staple back, because when you buy a uh, staple back, you can unstaple it and then rewrap it uh, as needed, which I've had to do a few times. There was a, a cruise where it just basically, the stretcher bar had a knot in it and it cracked during transit, so I had to stretch it when I got home. Um, 
uh, family tree, I think that was that painting. <clears throat> and uh, with, if you do one of those corded notch things, you can't undo that. It, it literally is so tight to the, the edge that you you're, you're basically have to stretch it smaller. Uh, same thing with staples side, a lot of times that'll happen and you have little holes down the side. So when you're buying canvas, definitely look for staple back. And, you know, from there, it's, it's all about preference, I think. You know, I, I, for a while I was using a heavy duty cotton duck canvas that had a heavy tooth, which is the, the ridges of the, the canvas was very, a lot of va deep valleys and high peaks that would capture paint or, or scrub the, the, off the brush. And uh, I liked that at the time because I was a heavy painter and, and it would really hold paint. Uh, nowadays, I prefer very smooth. And uh, James Coleman's uh, studio had given me a few canvases that I absolutely loved. And there was almost no bite to it. It's just smooth as all hell. And then when you gessoed it, it was like, it was like gloss. And, and I really, really like that. So, um, well, yeah, it's getting late. No, uh, I, you were cousin. Well, was I? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. It happened. Sorry, kiddos. <laughs> what, what word did I use? You said it was smooth style. Oh, oh, heck. <laughs> it's like Captain America. He's struggling Language. over here to keep his off. <laughs> He doesn't even know what he's doing it. Yeah. So anyway, canvas. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I would recommend in that way. Um, and then framing, just to make just one small little thing. Everybody was asking me what frames, and frankly, I, I, what I like to say is that it's a bridge from the, the image to your home. So that's my way of saying, I don't know, you guys figure it out. And, and in the nicest possible way, because, you know, certainly there's, there's opinions and I'm not going to tell you what kind of frame to put in your own house. So that's, you know, just no white frames. There. No white frames? No, I don't like frames. Maybe a white inner. I was going to say, because some of the yeah. ones you had framed had that white inner. Like that yeah. one, right? That we have hanging there? Uh, yeah. yeah. If it's you came to see me at art festivals, I just did a little linen inner, a little off-white, eggshell white, with uh, a, a, a contemporary faux wood outside. A little black lacquerish. Oh, Lewis said, thanks for going live. Y'all seem like really good down art people. Oh, thank you, Lewis. Well, I appreciate that. Continue good fortune with your art. Very nice. Thank you. And thank you. he will be seeing you or talking with you in um, a few weeks. Yep. It's coming up. Yep. So that's um, for anybody that was not watching that on Facebook. Um, someone came on who is with a podcast that Rob's going to be doing um, in a couple of weeks. So. I try not to say no to things like that. I mean, for me, it's, it's about scheduling, and frankly, well, they're mean, doing they, me a favor. The they're going to talk about Star Wars. You're going to be. I'm going to be in a heaven. A happy little clam. I yeah. mean, yeah, you're. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's going to be like, okay, I get a little time to talk Star Wars. Yeah, I, I love talking shop. So when someone says, "What kind of varnish do you use?" It's I'm like, okay, here we go. You know, let's talk. But that won't be shop. That'll be, well, look, I guess it'll be a little bit, but mostly. But, I mean, if you're talking, so. you know, like, licensed stuff, I, I will talk Disney history. I will, I love some of the, the, the where Disney started even before uh, Mickey Mouse or Snow White or whatever you want to talk about. Uh, some of it is, is very inspirational, and, and I love talking about it. Oh. Um, let's, uh... Well, I appreciate yeah, the thank compliments. Thank you for, for coming uh, in and asking questions. Yeah. I, I think we're winding down. I think we are. It's um it's going on 11 o'clock here on yeah. the East Coast anyway. So we're... And we haven't had dinner. We have not. <laughs> we, um, we've gotten in the habit of going for a, a walk slash fast run. Yeah. Or, or, Almost or, a 3 no, I mean 5K. A, a oh. run slash fast walk every night and so we eat after because obviously if we eat before then you know mm. but if but in Florida right now it's not getting dark until almost nine o'clock so we have to go at like eight mm. o'clock or else we're gonna be melting in the sun so anyway so that's why we haven't eaten hope to see you at Disney fantastic yeah we um, we 
will definitely post his dates when we have those. So anybody so. have any questions? I think we're wrapping up, but I'm seeing a lot oh, of people wait. joining. We said well, there would be a giveaway tonight. There is so. going to be a giveaway. So those of you who <laughs> stuck around. What will we give away? You want to give away a pin? Uh, sure. All right. What kind of pin? Pin of their choice. We have. We have oh, a, yeah. Um, well, a lapel pin. See, South Georgia, I hear pin like. Uh, she's saying writing pen. Okay. I just kind of realized. Melissa just joined. She used to be my neighbor when I was growing up. She probably That's says it fair. the same way that I do. <laughs> yeah. And to um, this day, if I say Albany, they tell me I'm saying it wrong. You are. You're saying it like the new, like the city in New I, York. I, I don't hear it. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so there's there's five different. So we're pens. gonna do a freebie there's... whatever today is with friends. Um, I guess it's Wednesday. Uh, wonderful Wednesday with <laughs> wonderful Wednesday with welcomed wackiness. No, all right. Um, um, okay, so the, what's going to be your question? Because we have not planned that part. Uh, uh, yeah. And you got three. Um, um, three. Well, actually, really, there's not much happening on YouTube now. So it's going to be between Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. So basically, maybe we'll do one for each. I, I think I have a question. Uh, and it actually ties to one of my next gallery appearances, at least the one that's confirmed in South Lake Tahoe. Uh, I unveiled a character in South Lake Tahoe inspired by one of my trips there and a little hike that I took with one of the consultants, Megan, yes. I hope you're there. Uh, and he had just emerged for spring. What kind of animal am I talking about? It was a, a trip to South Lake Tahoe. I had painted a particular character merging we'll do, we'll for do, spring. And there's a delay on these, so we'll give yeah. them a second. But we'll do one for Instagram. Just came up. Amateur Hour Fish got Anybody it. Anybody over here at the it's same the time? Bear. And the one, and now on Facebook, the first one that comes up there. It seems like Instagram has less of a le delay than Facebook. Yeah, I really like Instagram. Oh, no. Bear. Long does yeah, we got do it. Bear, two bear. over here. We've got... No. Oh, and I just said the answer, didn't I? You did. Because, okay, But it already well, came up, yeah. Now, Facebook, y'all just heard me say oh, it. Oh, South Texas. God bless you. One of my friends. See, look how it delayed there. it is. We were talking about the heat a while ago, and we're just now seeing your response, Lewis. So it is it is quite delayed on the comments on Facebook. Yeah, there's Diane coming in with Bear. Bear. All right, so we got... Oh. We got, oh, maybe we can do two. The first person on one and then the first person on the other. That seems fair. Okay, did I not? She did Did I not that. just say yeah. that? Like, right That was before. a good idea. I'm glad I thought of it. I should be present. <laughs> Jeez. <All right>. Um. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Bobby over here gets a, gets a pen of your choice, which of the five characters. And, and you can and go then, and see him, but basically it's Bo, Ollie... Bo, uh, Ollie, uh, Busy, Honu, and Red. Yeah. Yeah. But go to the website on the shop under pins. You can see, and then you can pick which one you want. Yep. Um, and the same thing over here, I believe it was Amateur Hour Fish. Yeah. Amateur Hour Fish. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so go go there and pick which one you want, and then let us know. And just direct comment. Yeah. Just give us your... Direct comment with your choice your and where we should mail it. Credit card number. No, no, no. <laughs> No credit I never card. want it. So that, no, don't want that. Yeah, so FYI, I don't know if the person who messaged us today, I don't see the person tuning in, but yeah, someone asked, would we take a order over the phone? And no, mm -mm. we're not going to be responsible for taking your credit card numbers. No way. We use a, uh, you know, a, a processor that's private, so. Yeah, uh, we wouldn't want anyone's information. Heck no, I'm not taking that. No way. So. Okay. So we've got um, we've got that done. So any last minute questions? Because I think we're gonna, gonna say, we're, we're gonna call. We're about it. to sign off, we're and I saw it. a bunch of people join in here. Uh, we covered a host of things, but um, definitely just I'm gonna be in California quite a bit. Uh, there might be something in Texas. We're still working out the details. It may or may not happen. And if that in a couple happens, weeks. that's the end of this month, right? Yeah. That will be a couple weeks a couple from weeks now. From now. Um, but that still working details. Uh, I don't know if it's going to fit because it is, I just found out. So, uh, anything else? I think we're good. I was waiting yeah. because of the delay, but, um, so I'm just trying to. going to get my trigger ready to end it. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Uh, we had a lot of people join, a lot of people say hello. So thank you all for coming, uh, from everywhere. 
Sorry about the YouTube. We'll try to figure out why it doesn't work on iPad. It failed on the iPad, so that was why we were and, late. We're, you know. yeah. And it failed on laptop, too. Or was it was it phone? Well, it failed on the phone the first time, but now I've got it worked out. So it, it works fine on the phone now. We're on the phone, we're on his phone on YouTube. No, we're on yeah, my Bobby, phone. Bobby, you can look on the website. On. Certainly there's uh, places to see all of them. Um, Just go to, to robcazart.com slash shop and you'll immediately see one of the options is pins. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. And we'll try to throw up a few, like a link to the uh, how to be a Disney, how I became a Disney artist and what I, my opinion on that. Oh yeah, we'll drop that in the comments. We'll drop the link in the comments. Uh, and um, the gallery locator for those of you looking. Uh, I know there was a question earlier about the piece I was working on, uh, so definitely find your local gallery and uh, other than that I hope to see you all out there and we will be doing a freebie Fridays on Friday mm -hmm. so yes, two more days from doing, now yeah we'll try uh, so if you want some free stuff uh, it's um, I don't know what social media platform yeah because we really like off. Instagram it's so quick I, I, I maybe that might be the one we go I don't know we'll, we'll talk about it but YouTube's letting me down with the social media right now. Um, well, with the live videos. With the live stuff. Not with anything no. else. With, I mean, but it, I think it's fairly new, right? Isn't it? That they haven't mm -hmm. been doing it but a few years. But um, but definitely go to YouTube for, um, you know, if you want to subscribe there, he does uh, yeah. videos of, um, mainly it's me behind the camera and him painting, right. but we'll take a whole video of him um, you know, as he progresses through a painting and then assemble it all. And I just actually uploaded one yesterday, I think, of when he did the new one with the fish, the blue fish. Blue. So you can see the whole thing from the time it was a blank canvas to the time it was finished. And um, so anyway, yeah. So go subscribe at YouTube and you get to get notified every time he has a new... Yeah. And you can comment on YouTube for those of you who were over there. <laughs> Uh, were. <laughs> were <over> YouTube's there. <laughs> gone. Hi, <laughs> YouTube. Yeah. So next week, or next, not next week, but Friday, we'll decide which one it'll be on. And then we've been yeah. flip flopping like one week Instagram, one week Facebook. We tried doing YouTube the one, but it crashed so hard. I'm, I'm a little gun shy about doing that one again. Yeah. We so. got, we signed on and it crashed. So we hopped over to Instagram. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I see there's just a few of us left after we gave something away. Y'all ditched us. So. <laughs> That's what they were waiting on. I, hey, <laughs> free, you know, that's, that's the operative word here. So, all right, guys, uh, I'm going to go get, try to get a little bite to eat and, uh, then maybe get to sleep. So, yep. and.